So here's my uh, next piece of equipment that I actually got from the Department of Defense this time. Uh, the one that I'd uh, done previously I actually got off eBay, uh, but I've had a bit of an auction score. So this is exactly um, how I received it from the Department of Defense. It had uh, these little tags on it here. You know, we can see that it uh, gives me its 11683A range calibrator. It has range calibrator associated there. It's the inspector's name on it. They have uh, turn in for storage on the documentation. So there does not appear to be anything wrong with it at all. So let's take that little, uh, let's see if I can get that little uh, string off. In fact, I may just use a knife here. To take that string off. Now, if you've seen my 437 video, you would have seen me utilize uh, an 11683A uh, range calibrator already. So you might be asking, well, what the hell am I doing buying another one of these? Well, the reason is because of the piece that's here on the back. So let me take this, uh, this top piece off here and uh, then we'll take a look at the back. Okay, here we go. We have the uh, range calibrator and, and everything's going off in here. We've got the range calibrator and you can see that it's uh, uh, a lighter model than the one I hear because this one is actually branded Agilent whereas the one that I've been previously using is uh, a branded Hewlett Packard. But it's fundamentally the exact same calibrator. So why did I invest in buying this calibrator from the Department of Defense. Well, the reason is on the back here, and I alluded to it before I cleaned off the top. If we have a look at the back here, all we have is the DC reference out, and we don't have any other uh, componentry here. But this guy here is the 11863, uh, 11683, sorry with option H01. Now what that option is, is it gives me an ability to put an external reference into this. So how this thing works basically is that there is a accurate uh, internal voltage reference that's set to 145 millivolts, plus or minus two millivolts. And then it utilizes a voltage divider to go and create the individual voltages for each of the ranges that you see here on the, the front, which is great. That's for calibrating the 435, 436, 437 meters. That's perfectly okay. When you start getting into the newer models, the EPM range, and in fact, the meter that I bought uh, uh, just recently, which was the, uh, an E4418B, uh, these, that internal reference is no longer accurate enough. So what you use is you use option H01 and you take your DC calibrator or you take a calibrated or accurate voltage source and you feed that in and you use that as the actual voltage source that goes into the divider that will then create the voltages that come out and enable you to be uh, achieve higher accuracy. So I saw this one uh, uh, on sale, so I wanted to go and uh, uh, and get it because uh, I would have to manually make the, the changes to this guy here. So while I was taking the, the seal off, uh, this guy I bought from uh, a Cal Center out of Texas, a uh, very cool location. They actually are in an old uh, uh, Nike or a Titan uh, missile uh, silo out there. Um, but I have never opened it up because it came to me calibrated and under warranty. And uh, I wanted to keep that calibration. But this guy, even though the calibration seals are still there, um, this one actually came off when I was pulling off that top. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I have no idea when it was calibrated. And I'm going to take a look at it anyway. Um, so let's take the top off and see what's inside. And here we go. So basically what you can see inside here 
is uh, a little transformer. We have our resistor network that is going to, to react to how um, what the voltage is, or to create the divider. From the back here, you can see where um, the switch is here and how it's going to switch in uh, this external voltage reference uh, as required. And what uh, if I select uh, the internal reference? You know, it's going to go and bring in. Uh, let's see if we can find where that internal uh, reference is going to come from. It's going to bring in a uh, look of it. So bring it in from this board up here um, to go and give me that uh, that internal reference that then gets fed in there. And then underneath there, if you look, uh, you can see, and, and I don't know if I can get a good shot, but they basically have an 8480 series sensor body in there that's going to be used to provide uh, uh, the sensor. And so if you have a look at what one of those guys look like, here is an actual 8482 sensor that I have and it uh, you, you can see that basically what they've done is they've taken that sensor they've given you the output of the sensor there and they've given you the front of the sensor is here and they've removed like the, the actual uh, mounting, the end type uh, mount there and they just feed in, and I'm sure they've removed the, the thermocouples or stuff like that to feed in the voltage so you get the exact voltage. So there we go, that's an 11683 range calibrator with uh, uh, the ability to do internal, external uh, range calibration. Let's uh, go power it on and see how it stacks up to its uh, uh, supposed reference voltages. Okay, so I let that uh, warm up for uh, uh, an hour or so, so that uh, we can go through and see how accurate it is. And uh, what we can see is if we bring in here, I have this set up uh, exactly as we have the outline here. We have um, uh, my Keithy uh, 2015 uh, connected via a four-wire uh, Kelvin-style cable into the DC uh, reference at the back uh, of there. So what it says for us to do is to uh, uh, set the uh, uh, the device for uh, five digits and uh, basically just go our way through and measure um, uh, the actual readings but really the the first one that I'm going to look at is this uh, one milliwatt range because if you remember the range uh, the default power supply in here is a 145 milliwatt plus or minus uh, 2 milliwatts so we can see that's bang in the center of the, the range there and you can look and see the uh, expectation here is that it's between 143 and uh, 147 so let's go back up to the the top and we'll just put the range on auto and then we'll start uh, recording some numbers okay 15.8 to four volts, 4 4.7182, 1.4654, 458.83 millivolts, Hundred and forty five point one two millivolts, and forty five point nine zero three. All right, now that I have that, uh, what it actually is asking me to do is to do uh, a little bit of ratio calculation work here and to see if we're going to be uh, uh, in uh, ratio. So let me go do that and uh, we'll take a quick look. Okay, so we've done our uh, little bit of math 
and we can see the uh, numbers there and if you take a close look at that you can see that I'm actually sitting between the minimum and the maximum so for the purposes of using this as 11683A um, calibrator the full scale because basically what we're doing here is just making sure that the value uh, that's going to come through the power meter here is enough to get a full scale um, movement on the meter uh, so we're sure of that so now the next uh, thing that we're supposed to do is uh, drop the calibrator into uh, standby which basically turns off the, uh, uh, the power and then measure the rest of the ranges here by utilizing a four wire resistance measurement so I'm going to select four wire select auto there and the first one I get is 3156.6 ohms 998.36 ohms what's my next one? it's 100 is my next one down All right. so then I get 315.92 ohms 100 exactly now let's go down another range I'm getting 31.656 so if we compare that number and the set of ranges that we have there you can see that uh, I'm in between what the expected ranges are there as well so that's uh, uh, pretty good in terms of being able to uh, uh, ensure that the range calibrator there shouldn't be any uh, adjustments required for us to actually uh, go and use this <clears throat> now if I was using this to calibrate my E4418B uh, I'd need to uh, put in a more accurate uh, uh, range value but uh, for all of the 4 series, the 435, 436, 437, 438, this thing is perfectly uh, uh, within range. So I hope you found that interesting, and uh, I'll catch you later. Bye.